So I've been working on this uh, next big base for Satisfactory. And you'll see I've got some, some things going on here. Uh, my plan is down in this area, there's, there's the, the battery base I've, I previously made. Um, I started looking at where I could put a lot of water and I thought what I was going to be able to do is line my nuclear power plant up vertically on this eastern coast. And as I tried putting down the water pumps, they were kind of back and forth on whether I could put them there or not. So instead, I've come back down here to this, uh, this area and I thought, well, let's, let's tuck the nuclear plant in here next to the batteries. Not a bad plan. Uh, I set myself up with a nice spire here. There's a water tower. Started fiddling around with water. I've, I remember that if you have some part of your water that goes up high and you, you, you can use that to pressurize everything so that all of it has that much head. Kind of cheesy, but that's the way the game is. And yeah, they're not going to change that. So we just have to accept that it's not going to be real water, real water physics. So I started setting up my water. Uh, my plan for the nuclear power plant is to have 30 uh, reactors, which is going to require a total of 60 water extractors. And what I have here is, uh, well, enough water extractors we've got all of these pipes. Each one of these pipes is going to be 600 cubic meters per second of water. So I believe that's 72. Anyway, it's a, that should be enough water for me. And if not, I can add a few more. And each one of these concrete boxes has all of the pipes coming in. So each pipe is serviced by two of these extractors. They all come over here and they all make a dog leg up and underneath there's a pipe that went from over here all of the way up to the top and back down. This little thing over here, I wanted to make sure that I could actually get enough throughput out of my drones. So I built these with sinks and started laying out all sorts of outposts over here. So all over the place, I now have a miner or something, and it feeds into drone outposts. Now, there's no way with one drone station at each end, I can carry all of the output from my I get 600 or 720 units per second out of these miners, depending on whether you know, what kind of node they're on. So typically what I'm doing is I'm setting up three drone stations, and what I will do is have drones in each one of these stations, and these will all be going to the same consuming engines. So three producing stations to one consumer. The consumer is going to have the batteries. And that does mean that when we look at the stats, uh, the producing ports will not be able to give us, they'll give us round trip times and number of batteries, but they won't be giving us batteries per second and so on. We have to compute that. I'm hoping that I have uh, provided enough overkill so that this will just work. But with the stations themselves, I've actually set up all of the raw materials gathering that we will need for the reactor. And with the exception of the uranium, I have tested throughput. Now, I didn't want to test the throughput of the uranium because I'd have to either deal with a whole bunch of uranium ore that got delivered during my test, which would be a lot of it, or I'd have to save before and restore after, which, yeah, I could do that, but eh, meh. Uh, I got enough confidence from my other ones that uh, my uranium mine is feeding up into three drone ports. I believe it's three drone ports. Might even be able to see it there in the distance. Let's see here. Right at the top of the waterfall. There it is, dead center. 
he also has a spire, he has a radar on top of him. But those three stations right there are my uranium stations and they're fed from the uranium mine which is below the waterfall. And I actually have power turned off so that uranium isn't flowing through right now. We'll turn that on when we're ready to go. So our next steps, now that we have all of the resources that are, that are posed and ready to go, is to start building uh, all of the things we need. Now, just to go over it really quickly, we need a copper outpost, uh, which is going to build copper ingots and copper sheets. In fact, we're going to need over 1,400 copper sheets per minute. We've got a concrete outpost, which is going to be turning out about 432 concrete per minute. We've got iron, uh, iron and steel area. I'm calling these outposts. They're going to be you know, close in this area as I want to start moving things over belts between the outposts. So they need to be within belting distance of each other. They can be down here. Um, You'll see how much vertical you see how much vertical head lift I've got of my water. They could be anywhere. Uh, I'm going to be using the refineries to use the pure recipes for my uh, various ores that can use that. So iron, iron going to go right into steel. So we're going to be exporting cable, stator, iron plates, steel beams, reinforced iron plates, and steel pipes. And I'm going to be using alt recipes that make early use of steel. We need a Caterium outpost. Uh, Caterium is going to be producing quick wire, 1800 quick wire per minute. Lots of that. So this is, this is a field of these guys and about 70 electromagnetic control rods per minute. Kind of a interest, intricate little build there. Um, that's not it's not too complicated, but it's a lot of buildings. So the Caterium Outpost has got a big footprint. I still need to plan those out. We need quartz. We've got quartz coming in from over there. We need to turn it into silica and beacons and crystal oscillators. We need to get some petroleum together. We need a small amount of rubber. And it's a byproduct. I found the best way to make rubber produces some fuel as a byproduct that we can chew up and, and spit out and add to our uh, eventual large amount of power. Power of the thing we're building is going to be rated at 180 gigawatts. And last but not least, a bauxite outpost, which will get turned into aluminum and ground down and turned into heat sinks. And with all of that, we'll be able to build a nuclear station, which is exactly twice as big as the first station I built. So with that introduction in place, uh, I am not going to be able to start building here until I figure out how big these outposts are, because I need to know how big they are and how I can lay them out. Uh, I have a rough diagram for um, which ones feed of which ones. So for instance, uh, I know that uh, DD2C, which is copper, is going to be uh, feeding most of its stuff to DD2F, so they're going to be near. So the copper outpost has to be belting distance to the terium outpost. Uh, likewise, the iron and steel outpost needs to be within belting distance of the caterium outpost and DD2H, which is quartz. And DD2G G, where'd we go? Hold on. DD2G is my coal mining. So there's really no outpost for DD2G, but there's just the coal miner mine gathering. And that'll be feeding into a couple of things, but those are long distance links. Um, the most important one is that copper link into Caterium. So copper and Caterium, I'm going to need to think about how big they are and how we lay them out and where we lay them out so that I can get belts to transfer that 1,678 units of stuff from one to the other. Anyway, not going to do that on camera. That's going to be hours of grinding through ideas and 
doing some layout and, and such, but I thought I would pop a quick video out showing where we were going there so I could free myself up to start doing it. I didn't want to pop into this video and say, oh, and here's the copper outpost. I wanted to show you what we've got here. Um, so for those of you that don't know about these water towers, basically the idea is that you configure some water extractors. Now, I don't think I actually need the second water extractor. I think that's extra. Uh, and I have his pump turned off for some reason that I don't fathom. Let's turn it back on. So in theory, I could take one water extractor, not even overclocked, and put this all in a Mark I pipe. As long as we have some source of water that gets pumped up high, and I've got a fluid buffer up at the top just so I can see that it, things are happening. You don't really need this. You could just take this pipe and dive, dive into this pipe. And this now, as it goes down, is a pressurized pipe. And anything you connect it to will now have enough head lift to get it back up to the height of our industrial water up there. And if we ever decide that we need more lift, I can blow this away and make this even taller. We can keep going up and up and up. Now I chose this particular height because I think at this height I can place things over this bio over here and they will still have enough head lift for me to get water to them. So we actually have a lot of flexibility now with all this water. So the pressurized water comes back down in the middle of this guy. And show you a little bit of that since that's been done. Um, if I were to color the pressurized water red, here it is. So we have the normal water pumps that are coming up here and go up and around. And these have no pumps or valves in them so that their head lift doesn't get disappointingly small. And boop, goes up and it's got all of that head lift inherited from this bottom pipe. Now I think um, it may also be that once the bottom pipe is full, it will tend to drain from that direction. So we, we may actually have a lot of flow through our bottom pipe as this goes through. And this just goes all the way out. I'm not gonna color it right now. Maybe sometime in the future I will. Um, I will be testing this with the bottom pipe limited down to a Mark I pipe and with only one of my water extractors and have that one water extractor un phase, but for now I've got everything turned up to the max. And I did want to see the water happen, and it took a while to fill this up. So there we have it, and I am going to end the recording and go do my planning, and we'll see you in the execution phase. I may or may not show you building the copper area. So until then, have a good one.